The question heard round the world, and the man who asked it is here with us now, Jeff Calkins of the Daily Memphian, joining us. Thank you again for taking some time, Jeff. Things got a little heated at last night's postgame news conference. We'll start with this. Were you surprised at the response you received from Penny? Yeah, I was stunned, honestly. <laughs> um, you know, Penny is um, uh, he's smooth. Like, Penny is cool. Penny is, whether he's on the sidelines or... Um, whatever else, he has this sense of overwhelming composure. And so I was absolutely stunned when you get an answer that includes three F-bombs and a BS. And, um, and honestly, the other reason I was stunned is the question was designed, you know, some people have said, that, you know, you were, you were trying to provoke him. No, I asked him, let's be clear, the question was, have you ever lost faith in your ability you know, in, in your in in your sense that you'll get this turned around. And I really just, given that they lost eight to 12 games, it was a question about his mindset and his morale and how he's feeling. And weirdly enough, in a way totally different than I expected, I got an answer to that. And that answer, do you think that it was just him simply not liking it or more frustration finally boiling over at the oh, point no, I mean, eight season? Yeah, I think it's pretty clear. Penny's frustrated, and I would be frustrated. This is not what he expected when he returned to Memphis as the conquering hero um, to go into your fourth year, uh, not having been in the NCAA tournament, now nine and eight, having lost uh, eight of 12, losing again to a pretty mediocre SMU team, um, and having all the various issues, whether it's a coach leaving or vaccination issues or now injuries that have beset him. So he was obviously uh, upset. And my question inadvertently triggered him. But I don't really blame him for losing his temper. Who among us has not ever lost their temper? I once had a shouting match on the radio with my co-host at the time, Gary Parrish. So like, it, it, I think everyone out there has lost their temper at some point, And that's what happened last night. And I think it's totally understandable. Absolutely. And in Penny's defense, he has dealt with significant and legitimate adversity. I mean, year two, James Wiseman left. DJ Jeffries got hurt. Last year, DeAndre Williams not cleared right away, as you mentioned. Uh, the injuries that have piled up, the vaccination issue as well as, uh, is, has been an issue as well for them losing that Tennessee game. But there's also been underperformance in that time. And both can be and are true. Do you feel that that's been properly acknowledged here between reporters, between fans? Oh, I, I, my sense is, is that Penny has gotten the gentlest treatment of any uh, coach um, who has had his record could possibly have imagined. He's been here four years, hasn't made the NCAA tournament. And any other coach, let's be clear, would be, we'd be saying, everyone would be saying, it's time to go, time to make a change, time to fire him. But it's Penny Hardaway. And he has earned a different um, level of respect and a different level of patience and, um, and, and then I think there is some recognition that they've been beset by unbelievable adversity. Now, to be clear, some of it is of their own making. Like the vaccination issue is their own problem. Like they created that by not having a team that wasn't fully vaccinated. And so it's why they lost to Tennessee. It's why they uh, lost the game to Tennessee and then why they then lost to Tulane. And so some of this was self-inflicted. Uh, very clearly, the, the 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 injuries now to DeAndre Williams and Landers Nolly, that's just bad luck. Um, and so they're dealing with that, but but they're certainly not the only team in the country that's that's dealing with injuries. Houston has devastating injuries and continues to roll along. Do you think that Penny has grown accustomed to that treatment that, that you mentioned here of, of having uh, favorable and optimistic coverage up to this point from reporters? Oh, I don't think Penny thinks he's gotten optimistic coverage. Like, I suspect that Penny thinks, oh, people are being terribly unfair to me. I just don't, I, I don't believe that objectively you can think that. Like, if you look at what happened with Tubby Smith when after two years he was being, you know, run out of town, 
um, or when you look at what happened to Josh Pastner, who after going to NCAA tournament after NCAA tournament after NCAA tournament, never advancing particularly, but was run out of town. Um, and then you see what's happened with Penny, whereas only now are people even starting to wonder if it's going to work. And I have not heard any media member say he should be replaced. No one. And I have not said it. Um, and there is no other coach that could have had the record that Penny has had for four years and, 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 and not have that be a resounding chorus at this point. Penny is treated with kid gloves because he's earned it. He has. And, and, and you know, in that vein, you're talking about a legend of the city, a legend of the program who's struggling. And while he'll rightly be given every chance to succeed, it is awkward in the meantime. Uh, how uncomfortable is this situation for everybody, especially the university? Oh, it's incredibly awkward for everybody. And, and, and you know, there was a moment, the first six minutes of that game yesterday, when Memphis fans are asked to stand until the team scores, and there it goes, six minutes without scoring a single point, including six turnovers, missed foul shots, everyone just standing there. It was embarrassing. It just was. And everyone felt for Penny, for the situation. You just feel sick about it. There comes a moment when it was Tubby that people at that point, at the end, wanted him to fail so he would be gone. Nobody wants Penny to fail. Nobody. Everyone wants him to succeed. And I will say this, unlike most coaches in the situation who once you get here, you can't imagine a way out with Penny, because he is such an icon, all he has to do is start winning games and people will, there, there is a very clear way out. Indeed, in the second half yesterday, as bad as things were, when the Tigers made it a three-point game, the fans were right back in it. People love Penny. And so there is an obvious way out here. It's just to win games, and I don't know right now the program being where it is, whether they have the wherewithal to do that. Well, that leads me to my, my final question. I don't know if confidence is the word, but are you still confident that Penny can turn this ship around? I don't think confident was the word I'd pick. Hopeful. I'll yeah. pick hopeful. I'm Optimism. hopeful he can turn it around. No, I mean, if you were to ask me to predict what will happen, I'm, I would predict that at this point – you predict he missed the NCAA tournament. At this point, you'd predict the NCAA will finally come down with a ruling that probably won't be kind to Memphis. At this point, you'd predict further messiness. All we've had is messiness for three and a half years. Um, but that's not what I hope for. What I hope for is that they start running off win after win after win, that they get to the NCAA tournament, and that the Penny Hardaway era, era takes a turn back to what we all wanted it to be. But I think we're at a point now where it's beginning to look more questionable.